I am feeling a little bit cheesy today. I think it's time to play some hyper-aggressive games of StarCraft 2. Now, of course, I'm playing this at the exact same time as I'm also giving commentary to it, but I think it's time to see if I can rush my opponent with Zerklings and then Ravagers as well. I've mostly been playing macro lately. I barely ever cheese, in particular in the new season of SC2. I've just been, you know, playing like, I would say like 90% macro. Barely ever cheese, unless, you know, it's like the continuous Zerk for the Zerk cycle on the European server in particular, right around like 6, 7 p.m. I see so many Zerg players recently. But you know what? I almost autopiloted right there into a hatchery first. Let's go ahead and build that gas geyser and then the spawning pool as well. But yeah, generally speaking, I don't really cheese unless I play like my sixth Zerg versus Zerg in a row. It gets a little bit crazy every now and then. Anyway, let's go ahead and build like a 17 uh, gas and like a, I think there was a 17 spawning pool as well. And now we're going to be following it up with a 17 hatchery on the low ground. The idea behind this build is that I'm going to be able to rush my opponent with Zerklings and Roaches pretty early on into the match. Just double checking if there's no cannons going up anywhere. I would actually be okay with that as well. It is definitely a build that is uh, meant to close the game out pretty early, but there's still a chance you can follow it up with macro as well. And I actually think that a build like this would be pretty good, just because very few Protoss players nowadays actually scout. I mean, they just sort of um, scout with like the very first Adept, or they maybe use the Oracle a little while later into the game. But they don't really like play a super scout-focused early game. Like this, for example, as well. My opponent is not going for any kind of probe scout whatsoever. I'm actually going to leave the drones and gas then. Normally, you're forced to pull them off for just a little bit, but you know what? Let's start up the link speed. Maybe like one set of Zerklings as well to do a little bit of scouting of our own. But there's no probe moving across the map just yet. My Roach Warren's already coming in. Let's go ahead and build a Queen. And then I think we're going to follow it up with like an Overlord or two as well. Now, there's probably a more efficient way of cheesing. Usually, it doesn't really matter all too, too much. Obviously, you do want to try and make sure that you get the most efficient strategy going. But it should be a pretty good early game for us. And uh, let's go for another Overlord as well, because we can. Yeah, normally you're actually forced to uh, to pull the drones out of gas for a little bit and delay the Roach Warren and all that. But apparently my opponent in this match is just simply not scouting whatsoever. Even going for the Zealot first as well. I would love to see like a Stalker follow-up from him. That would be pretty funny too. If he goes for a Stalker right now to try and hunt Overlords, that would be uh, that would me basically mean that he's not going to have any kind of scouting information whatsoever. And he actually goes for a Sentry. Okay, Nexus is coming in right now for him. He hasn't uh, gotten any information about this just yet. I think we're gonna make like one more Roach here. That would bring the total up to about six, seven-ish? Yeah. Let's go ahead and follow it up right now, uh, non-stop Zerklings. I'm gonna be able to move across the map here without my opponent actually knowing what's going on. He's gonna be going for another gateway here. That's fine. Link speed just finished. My, um... Roaches are already moving across. Queen Inject also just popped off. My opponent is not going to have a whole lot. And this is what this is why cheese can be really good, okay? I wouldn't recommend cheesing every single match. But when your opponent is clearly cutting corners, like it seems like my opponent is doing in this particular match, and he's really not, like, you know, playing a safe and solid strategy. And instead, he's just trying to, uh, you know, get away without scouting. He's trying to get away without really dealing any kind of damage whatsoever. And he's not really going for any kind of, you know, information at all. He's essentially playing fully in the dark, and if he's cutting a corner, we're gonna be okay. Let's go. Right now, he's finally going in for the scout, but that's a little bit late. Corrosive Bile will be landed right there on that set of, uh, that set of units. Okay. Continuously running units across. Let's actually kill this uh, Cyber Core. And with that, we all of a sudden have broken into my opponent's base. He doesn't have energy anymore. Continuously raining the Biles. My opponent is not going to be able to counter that because obviously we're already surrounding all of those units. Okay, very good. And at this point, it is essentially already game over. Four minutes into the match as we are killing all of my opponent's probes as he was cutting a little bit too many corners. So game number one is gonna go in my advantage. The second game is against a Terran player. Let's give him the GLHF or the GLFH, apparently. I already messed up my GLHF, that's probably not a good sign, but let's go ahead and do a little bit of a Ravager cheese. Obviously, uh, the good old one base a Ravager cheese is still one of the most popular builds in like best of five series and whatnot. The only thing is that it's pretty easy to counter for a Terran player if they just simply do an SCV scout. 
if they send an SCV scout across the map, oftentimes they can just pick up the victory right, and then, right then and there because they can respond to it in time. If, however, they do not and they rely on their very first Reaper to do the scouting for them, usually as a Zerg, you're going to be pretty happy because not only can you usually kill the command center uh, building SCV on the low ground, but you can also go for the Ravager follow-up very, very nicely. So it all comes down to whether or not my opponent decides to SCV scout. Even if he does, though, we still have a chance of winning, but it does significantly go down. Oh, I thought my bailing nest or my spawning pool rudder was already done. There we go. Alrighty. I'm going to be able to uh, right now go for a set of Zerk links. These links are going to be pretty important. And very shortly, we're also going to be following this up with the very first of the two overlords. There we go. Trying to mine the closed mineral patches here first, just because it gives you just a little bit more income. If you're going to be playing a low eco build like this one, it's usually worth trying to micro the, the closed by mineral patches instead. There is an SCV here? For some reason, he's not really doing anything. So you know what? I'm not actually going to bother with it either. I am going to send my units across. This actually kind of makes it tricky, though. If my opponent has even, like, a, a whiff of the situation that he's going up against, I mean, right now, seeing a lack of an expansion is already a pretty big deal. But if he just has any kind of indication that this is indeed a very aggressive build, we may be in some trouble, because just, uh, you know, either, like, uh, reacted cyclones or, for example, quick marine play even, or sometimes even, like, a quick siege tank or banshee can absolutely shut this one down. You do have to respond accordingly, though, and that's kind of the tricky part. So no command center on the low ground here. Normally you try and snipe that. There's a bunker going down at the front. Bunker going down at the front indicates to me that it's going to be a bio-based defense. Now, I just mentioned marines, and marines definitely are pretty good at cleaning this build up. But it's definitely my uh, my personal uh, my personal uh, most disliked one. I don't think it's a particularly amazing strategy to go for. My opponent indeed now forced to pull some drones or some SCVs off the line. Going for another Overlord. Here we go. It takes seven biles to bile down a uh, a bunker. The nice thing is, I can bile right in between these two buildings. So I'm just gonna continuously do that. Gotta do the big switcheroo here. Gotta be careful. Slowly building up that Ravager count. Trying my very best to micro back the weakened units continuously. Getting to the point, though, where we're going to be able to one-shot it. Right now, I've got seven. Uh, there's one of them still moving across. Need to get these overlords close by as well. Just because right now there's a cyclone. And cyclones are pretty scary. There's no command center for my opponent, though. As far as I can see, at the very least. There he goes. I'm still a little bit worried, though. Okay. Killed a lot of SCVs there. He doesn't have a tech lap on that starport as far as I could see, so that makes this more defendable for me. It's just that he does have one on the on the on the factory. So there's actually a chance that this is not gonna work out at all. Gotta be careful. Siege tanks can definitely be scary. Vikings not so much though.
Takes three biles to kill a siege tank. <laughs> oh man! Andy! Andy, that's not very nice of you to say! Andy! You crazy! Andy does not appreciate the cheese as much as I do. He's more of like the soft cheddar. He doesn't like the, the heart. Actually, is there a soft cheddar? I don't even know. Oh, 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 oh. Andy, Andy, Andy. Andy, come on now, bro. We're playing high level SC2. You've probably faced this build a lot. Oh well, a win is a win. And the last game for today will be against a Grandmaster Terran. Definitely not going to be an easy game to win, but we will have to try our very best. What should we go for, though? That's kind of the question, right? I'm trying to think. I just went for my favorite cheese. That was the 12 pool, of course, into uh, into the cheeky uh, follow-up as well with a lot of Ravagers. I think it's probably the strongest cheese to execute against Terra. And it's just that a lot of the other ones, like a lot of the classic ones, like, for example, um, the Ling Bane style, like just a, a simple Ling Bane bust, they can work quite well, but usually your opponent is going to be able to counter that pretty easily, as they will... Most of the time, just simply be playing that standard, um, either like a single factory or double factory play. And obviously, a lot of uh, Terran players right now are focusing on quick banshees and whatnot as well. It's pretty tricky to follow uh, to follow up um, a, a bailing bus with anything, in particular if you're playing against someone who's who's got mules. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. I may actually go for something a little bit different. What if we go? And this this is like something that probably won't work. But what if we go? And this is just going to be a test, right? But what if I go for a Nidus Worm and Queens? I can't promise that this is gonna work, because we are playing against a very high level player, and that definitely is, is gonna mean that we are gonna be in a little bit of trouble. But if I play like a two base, Roach, Queen kind of push, and I can get it up inside of his base, or at the very least reasonably close to his base, and by the way, he's gonna go for an SCV scout. So, you know, no cutting corners from my opponent in this one, like for example, Andy did. <laughs> Um, we are gonna be in a pretty good position. If we can manage to get it up, that's the main, that's the main issue though. If we're not gonna be able to finish up the Nidus Worm, we are gonna be in a world of hurt. But, you know what? Let's figure it out. Let's see if we're gonna be able to do that. Alright, Spotting Pool is gonna be finish up, uh, finishing up in just a little bit. I wanna leave those drones in gas. And we're just gonna continuously build Queens. It's just that, if a Terran player sees, right? That I, um, and we're at link speed by the way as well, just because I'm probably gonna need it in the earlier part of the game. But if my opponent sees that I am indeed skipping out on a third base, he may actually already realize that something is not quite right. We'll see how this is gonna play out. Um, yeah, there we go. Reaper's coming in. We'll just have to micro here until my, um, until my queens come out. It's gonna be a little bit of a back and forth. Usually not that big of a deal, although I may lose a ling or two. There we go. You know what? I'm actually gonna go for the hatchery right now already. Very, very greedy hatch. Still making the drones. My opponent can't really scout this very easily. On this map, there's not really a proper way to jump up into the main base. Most maps nowadays do daft that, so I figured this is probably gonna be okay. I do have to make it look like I'm going for a third. Let's do the pretend expend. The good old pretend expend. I'm sending out a drone right now towards the third. I don't plan on making a third. I don't even have money for it. Oh, I do need them to scout this, though. Alright, I think he saw the drone leave, although I can't confirm if that happened. That's alright. I don't really know exactly what my opponent is doing either, by the way. It's not like I'm gonna adjust my strategy anyway. Usually, though, they will be building over there, right? So, Nidus over there can actually do a lot of damage. Mm. This is a pretty cheeky build, not gonna lie. I don't even think I need this much gas, to be honest with you. I think actually, uh, 3 is probably gonna be okay, because I want to make a lot of queens as well. Let's save up. Just made two, uh, two overlords here, but let's save up from here on out. He doesn't know about my lack of a third. 
And that's a big deal. If he would know about that... Okay, right now he will find out. He might go ahead and scan. If that is the case, we may be in some trouble, but... Here we go, knight is in the main. Let's put the high energy queens in first. And I want to show him my, uh, my roaches at this point. Just so he knows that he can't mess with me. I'm a big boy, you can't mess with me. Rally points straight on top of that, that thing. He knows right now about the Nidus inside of the main base. Oh baby. Aliens have returned. <laughs> and my opponent decides to leave the game. So yeah, just to clarify, my opponent right there was at 5.4k MMR. And as far as performance go, you can indeed see that he is in Grandmaster League. Right there with his account, and apparently going for a bit of a cheeky build, may still very well catch the top 200 on a given server off guard. I mean, look at that army value graph <laughs> going absolutely nuts. Interestingly enough, I did still have a, a pretty decent amount of workers. If you uh, cut out the third base, you still get quite a few workers there in the earlier part of the game. But we ended up obtaining the victory there. I already had a uh, an Overseer ready to go as well in case he did finish up Cloak. But I hope that you enjoyed watching this bit of a cheesy video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. Other than that, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, alright? Special shout out to the Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. But I will see you all in the next one.